Jones on Would I Lie to You? The Queen of Eviction, Davina McCall, the Prince of Nonfiction, Dave Gorman, and their team captain, David Mitchell. And facing them tonight, she's no dummy, Janet Street Porter. He's from the Mummy, Omid Jalili. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And here's your host, Rob Brydon. Good evening, and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that rewards the very best liars. Uh, research shows that 51% of Scottish women lie to get out of lovemaking. Oh, I'm allergic to bins. <laughs> Lovely image, isn't it? <laughs> and psychologists claim that laughing at a joke you don't find funny is a form of lying. I disagree. I think it's good manners. <laughs> and I'll thank you all to remember that. <laughs> and so, to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists take it in turns to read out a statement about themselves from the card in front of them. They haven't seen what's on the card yet. It could be a truth, it could be a lie, but it's definitely a card. <laughs> Janet is first up. Janet, reveal all. <clears throat> right. <laughs> I wrote my will on a bit of cardboard when I thought the plane I was in was about to crash. Oh, there we are. Right. No, but certainly, yeah, she was, I'd say, trying to make it look like she was amazed by the ridiculous yeah. thing on the card. Yeah, like yeah. But maybe she was amazed by the ridiculous thing on the card, because <laughs> I imagine <laughs> if a plane crashed, one of the things that would perish along with the humans <laughs> would, be, would be the cardboard. <laughs> so, um... Are you asking me to comment well, on I'm, that? I, 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 I think he's just suggesting that you should have written your will on the black box. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's logistically impossible. Are they locked you in their cabins now? Oh. Sorry to argue with you. No, you, no I, you see, I'm, I don't think that the black box solution was workable either. OK. <laughs> I, I think when they talk about when they find the black box, what they do is it's a recording they play rather than so they read what's written on it. <laughs> don't you mean I could have got in the pilot's cabin and just screamed my will at them? You could have actually got <laughs> on the radio and say, never mind, Mayday, Mayday, yeah. take this down. <laughs> Was it cardboard and not paper? <laughs> it was a packet. A packet. Of what? <laughs> Do you um, always look this cheesed off when you're thinking? It's, I've got so many cogs whirring in my brain. Mm. I'm just trying to control so them. So many what? Sorry. Cogs. Oh. <laughs> Who makes double figures? <laughs> um, I think it's triple figures you're aiming at. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was a film packet. Why film did you part. think it? Why did you think it would work? I was panicking. Yeah. The bloody plane was crashing. You're not <laughs> logical, <laughs> are you? What were you writing? I mean, were you writing like bits and bobs to each person, or was it like everything? I was leaving everything to the person I was with. But oh, he was in the plane. <laughs> Has to come through me. Right? <laughs> so presumably it didn't crash because thankfully you're, you're with us and you know. No, we thought it was going to crash. Yeah. And the plane had problems with the landing gear. Well, David, you've heard yeah. you've okay. heard a fair old testimony. Well, here. I don't think um, Janet doesn't strike me as a. She moron. will do by the end of the night. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think to write a will on something that will burn more quickly than you will. <laughs> is a moronic act. But the only thing that worries me was the beginning when she looked at it. it I felt, felt that bluff. she was acting. Yeah. And you're thinking all along, she knows exactly what she's reading because it's the truth. I think it was a bit double bluff at the beginning. You, you I think, think it's probably true. true. Yeah. And you're leading I to think what's it true. it could be true. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I just don't think it is true, but I'm, I'm happy to be outvoted. We think it's true. <laughs> you say it's true. <laughs> Janet, is it fact or fiction? True. Oh. Oh. Yes, I was right. <laughs> oh. It's true. That was brilliant. How did you get there? 
Yes, it's all true. Janet wrote her will on a bit of cardboard when she thought the plane she was on was about to crash. Passengers heard a terrifying, whining noise, an unearthly screeching. It was Janet asking for an extra blanket. <laughs> uh, Davina is next up. Davina, reveal all. Yes. <clears throat> I have two chilies tattooed on my back, but I'm having them covered up because they look like carrots. Please, team, what do you think of that faltering delivery? Well, wh whereabouts are they on your back? Um, they're on this side. I know where the back is. Sort of <laughs> down on my shoulder. When did you have them done? Uh, 15, 20 years ago. Why, why did you choose the two red chilies? Um, I was in Bali. And uh, we were uh, on an island um, called Lombok. We? I don't remember this. And <laughs> Lombok... <laughs> Face. I know you've got tattoos. What are the other tattoos? Um, horns. Where's that? Uh, on my hips. One on each side? Yeah. <laughs> what, so your belly button looks like a ram's nose? Not my belly button. Yeah. What? <laughs> she said, not my belly button. <laughs> yeah, nice. What can I say? Hey, a bit of sauce yeah. from McCall. I like it. Did you choose chilies? So that if a bloke came across him, he'd think, she's hot stuff. Yeah, but I would think that if people didn't think they were carrots. <laughs> Either that or here's something I don't want in my mouth for too long. <laughs> so you were in Bali, who were you in Bali with? My boyfriend at the time. Changed now? Yeah. Right, 15 okay. years ago. 15 didn't work years out. ago. Well, that's and fair enough. So Lee, you went, you were right with that. I'm fine with that, yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Relationships fine. change, you know? No, no, I'm starting to dislike you. <laughs> what do you reckon? What do you think, Janet? Like. Fib. Fib. Big fib. Omid? Like, definitely. Omid says it like he's passing sentence. <laughs> I actually think it's true, but my team think it's not true. And who am I to overrule... her? <laughs> so, Lee, I really do need a... OK, I'll go with my team and I'll say that that is, in fact, a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Davina McCall, is it true or is it a lie? Oh, true. Oh, true. Oh, true. I'm so sorry. I was just about to support you. <laughs> Let's have a look then. I need some I'll, I'll do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Carrots. Well. <laughs> Very, very I got done. Yeah. Give me a moment now just to let the blood come back to my head. Um, <laughs> yes, it's true. Davina is having her tattoos of chilies covered up because they look like carrots. Davina was inspired to have the chilies done after a wild holiday in Lombok, Indonesia. Similarly, David has a very striking tattoo on the small of his back of the wonderful Tiverton Steam Museum. <laughs> Omid, your turn to confess all. It says, read with accent. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a bomb strapped under my shirt? <laughs> That's in very poor taste. That's in very poor taste. Um... No, no, that, that's, that's obviously a lie. <laughs> I am launching my own range of condiments, including Omi Jalili Piccalilli. <laughs> so, if you're it. not, you've got to. <laughs> <laughs> who, who approached you about launching a range of condiments? Uh, Penguin Books. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. They, they, that's where their money comes from. <laughs> Barry Norman has a range of pickled onions out. Through Penguin Books? I don't know about Penguin Books, well, yes. but Barry Norman does have jars of pickled onions. Well, on like Paul jars. Newman with his salad. No, he does. Salad, yeah. Well, it was. That, that was the idea. They were trying to make this Paul Newman thing happen. I said, I've only done a few bit parts and a few films. And they said, well, you're quite well known in comedy, and we're trying to get this new thing, Jalili Piccalili. There'll be other, other uh, products as well, Jalili Chili, all kinds of things with Lily at the end. So why, yeah. why did Penguin Books? I mean, just... <laughs> is it... Is it 
to go with a book. They wanted me to write a book, but I didn't feel I was old enough or experienced enough to write anything about my life. So, so you said, how about I do some sort of sauces and spices and... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, they did. They, there was somebody who was in the meeting who has a sideline in condiments. So Henry Book said, we'd love you to do a book. And you said, no, no, <laughs> won't do a book. OK, oh dear, he won't do a book, that was a good idea. Any chance of some condiments? Because <laughs> in the office next door, there's a guy and basically what he's just been working on some pickled onions with Barry Norman. <laughs> you know, he was brilliantly. Your name rhymes with some condiments. <laughs> yes. Particularly pickled which we're, we're trying to introduce to a new generation. Reintroduce. That's not his real yeah. name. His real surname is Jabasco Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not really prepared confused. to say anymore. Absolute... I think it's gone so weird that I it's think, true. I, I think. Th well, stranger things have happened, but I think only but about six ever. The books thing is can't the be true. Books, it's can't so, be true, can it's, it? It's such a strange thing to make up if it's a lie that it makes me think it's true. I, you see, I think what I'm worried that we're in danger of doing here is say, <laughs> having heard something that is absurd and obviously not true, and saying that therefore it must be true. <laughs> So, come on, what's it going to be? I think we think it's, gonna, it's a lie, but I'd like to say, if it is true, it's what a wonderful world. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie. It's a okay, Omid yes. Jalili, is it fact or is it fiction? It's absolute crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Omid is not launching his own range of condiments, including Omid Jalili Pick a Lily. That's quite clearly a lie. Actually, Omid did once release his gentleman's relish in a supermarket. <laughs> and to this day, he's banned from Asda. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, where I will be reading out some strange celebrity facts, but will I be lying through my teeth or telling the truth through my teeth? Uh, Lee's team, take a look at this. It seems to me that it's highly likely that pigeons, like any other sort of bird, are going to have regional accents. We've got a, a pigeon here in Scotland that was born ten years ago and has lived in Scotland ever since. So we're going to get quite a nice pronounced Scots accent with a bit of luck. If you keep going south and drop down maybe, maybe even as far south as Putney, you're going to get a nice Cockney accent developing from your pigeons. <laughs> there we are. I love the fact that, you know, how much they patronise me on this show. We're 4 0 down, and yes. I'm thinking, give Lee a chance, ask him a question about pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> we'll understand that. It's, from oh, it's the more north. than that. That's your dad filmed two weeks ago. <laughs> My dad's dead. <laughs> Was he dead two weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't, actually, no. Right, fine. Yeah. Good point, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> so, here is the related fact for Lee's team. Uh, Mike Tyson once rented a hotel suite for his eight favourite pigeons. Do you believe that, Lee's team? It's been well documented that Mike Tyson breeds pigeons. So they have their own suite? Sure. Yes. Why is the pigeon, like, called down for room service? The woman on reception must be going, it's just a dialing tone. <laughs> <laughs> this is a world in which the pigeon has lifted the receiver and pressed the button for room service. He invited several journalists up to his hotel suite where the eight pigeons were perched on the wardrobe in the bedroom, and he said to one of the journalists, be careful where you fit. I've, well, that's... that's <laughs> That's who that, that's that British one. That's um, Chris Eubank. Chris Eubank, yes. It's a famous thing about Chris, because I can do a very good Chris. Oh, um, that's very careful. really good. I know, it's such a shame it's about bloody Tyson, isn't it? Bummer. Do the same, do the same thing Tony Wogan, do Tony Wogan. Oh, be careful where you sit. Uh, <laughs> Franz Ferdinand. Um, <laughs> Um, Davina, you, I, I've heard uh, you do a very good pigeon impression. And if that's true, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> it's going to shit on the bonnet of a car, isn't it? <laughs> I'm impressed with how you're centering yourself. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke over 
it. <laughs> again, again, do it again. That's great. Oh, lovely. Well done. There you are. So, Lee, what do you, let's have you guess, then. Is, is it true or is it a lie? I, you think that he would actually book a hotel for his pigeons? He loves them that much, he'd book a hotel room for them. You're no, paving the way for me to be in the doghouse again, aren't you? Is that a child blind? No. <laughs> We've got naught points. But is no, I'm just working out. Right. You're already regretting you. having me on your team. I didn't and if have I get a choice. this wrong. <laughs> I've been in a room with him and he's got such a scary atmosphere around him. I can imagine something like that would be true. You think it's true? Yeah, I, I, think, I it's think it's true. true. Okay. I don't think it's true, but you're I'm going to go true. with my team the again. Team so, so far, the rec track record has been brilliant. <laughs> the team are saying true. It's true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mike Tyson did once rent a hotel suite for his eight favourite pigeons. Which means, at the end of that round, it's uh, David in the lead by four points to one. is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it'll be up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Sadie. <laughs> Hello. So, Lee, what is Sadie to you? This is Sadie. She's my children's nanny, and the first time I met her, I ran over her foot. <laughs> okay, Omid. Um, this is Sadie, and I employ her to massage my dog. <laughs> and that's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And finally, Janet. Sadie came to my 60th birthday party, pretended to be a waitress so she could lick Daniel Craig's plate. <laughs> so, there we have it. <laughs> David's team, where do you want to start? Can I just check? Do you know Lee? Uh, have you been to his I, house? I, I, I can just about remember his name. <laughs> well, do you know his nanny? No. Okay. I, because if I knew Lee's nanny, I'd either have gone, that's Lee's nanny, <laughs> She's my children's offer. nanny. I'm not a complete moron. <laughs> She's not my nanny. Uh, now, this, this running over the foot business. Yeah. Uh, that was the first time you met her. Correct. Uh, and the circumstances were? Uh, I was in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and she was on the driveway. Correct. What happened immediately after the foot running over moment? Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forward. Ow! That was my foot! <laughs> <laughs> you see, she's laughing quite a lot now, as if, like, I have to laugh, he's my employer. Yeah. <laughs> but this wasn't, as it were, how you met her. You didn't run over her foot and say, you look like you might be a good nanny. <laughs> it was the first time she'd arrived at the house. I hadn't met, I'd never met her before, because so, so my wife... Your wife had interviewed her and Yeah, and I said, can finish my own sentences, yeah, yeah. I'm really good at it. <laughs> um, my, my wife had, uh, had, had interviewed, actually, you're correct, yes. <laughs> Why do you have to get your dog massaged? Uh, that... First of all, I, it's, it's my kid's dog. We've had the dog for about seven years. Uh, th they wanted to get a masseuse because of uh, arthritis. It's a spaniel. We've had it for seven years, so in dog years it's about 42, so it's quite early, and I didn't want to pay for a masseuse, but it Couldn't somebody killed the else dog. learn to massage? Instead? It's a, very it's it's a highly skilled thing. It is. Uh, it's about £35 a session. And how long are you going to have to do it until the dog... Uh, I don't, we don't know. It may, it may be indefinite. You know you can have a dog put down for 30. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, can I just check? Sadie came round to your house, she pretended that she was a waitress, she wanted to lick Daniel Cla Craig's plate, and you didn't just chuck her out and go, you are completely weird, you're leaving. No, I don't care. Well, she, she was not... There was a lot of people at the party, and Sadie yeah. was at the party, I Daniel Craig was at the party. Yeah, a... Sorry, so Sadie was, a, was invited to the party? Yes. The waitress act was in order to gain access to the plate? Yes. I'd, so what I she did is, instead of approaching... through the uh, ins and outs okay. of it, I was Why being, not? I was, because it was my bloody birthday, I was getting trashed, I was having a good time, like anyone ill tonight would do, you know, right. just because you're 60, love, doesn't mean you can't, you know, get off your trolley. The question is, why do you think 
that Sadie, instead of using her position as a party guest to talk to Daniel Craig, which is legitimate in a party, I think you'll right. agree. Right. Go on, have no, him. really <laughs> getting on my wit <laughs> now. Have him. Come on, Sogno. Have you met anyone famous in your career? <laughs> really famous? <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Craig, could you actually speak? No. There you go. She's right. Answer. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Please talk. Are you going to walk over and stand there in answer to every question? <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all a bit scared now. Yeah. No. It... Hey, I'm most scared because I'm closest. <laughs> all right, we need an answer. Need an answer. So, uh, so David's team is Sadie and Nanny whose foot Lee ran over, Omid's dog masseuse, no. or a plate-licking pretend waitress at Janet's party. Janet absolutely did, couldn't look at Sadie when she walked in, and I thought maybe that was because she really had licked it embarrassingly. It's just Janet an odd thing. I mean... I'm leaning... Uh, I think it's Omid or Janet, and I'm leaning towards Janet on this one. Right, I'm mm. going Janet. OK, well, let's go Janet. You're saying Janet? OK. Uh, Sadie, would you like to reveal your true identity? Yes, I pose as a waitress. Yes, I clear <laughs> Daniel Craig's face away. And yes, I licked it clean. Good wow. Can I just say, Sadie, that um, you sound uh, you sound very broad-minded. <laughs> Sadie, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team have five. Lee's team are catching up with one. <laughs> Which brings us on to uh, our final round that we call Quick Fire Lies. Uh, Lee's team are currently way behind, <laughs> so they need to make a comeback, starting with... Uh, oh, David Mitchell. Right. The screensaver on my phone is a photo of my living room carpet. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a mobile phone. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody London for you, eh? <laughs> Lee. Is he telling the truth? Well, if anyone's capable of this. <laughs> what colour is the carpet? Sort of, um, a very bright beige. <laughs> I like the fact that you thought beige might be boring. I'll jazz it up a bit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> why, why would you do that? Why would you take a photograph of your carpet? Well, um, I've got a mobile phone which is the same model as a phone as, that many people have. Yes. And, and I've needed a way of distinguishing it from other people's. You know, it might be left at a table in a meeting and then you pick it up and go, oh, yes, I immediately recognise that because it's the one with the car carpet. The carpet. <laughs> <laughs> a beige carpet. I might have done it once I know, a long time he's time done ago. something on that carpet. Oh, he has it, has he? Yeah. <laughs> So you think... <laughs> yeah, I think you've done something. Um, um, right. You might photograph your carpet. You wouldn't photograph a beige carpet. So what are we saying? True or false? So I think it's false. False. You're saying it's a lie. OK, so, uh, David, is it true or is it a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, David, the obvious question... Would you, would you please whip it out and let us have yeah, a look? Absolutely. There we go. Yeah. Oh, we, we have a close-up, actually. We've... And there it is. It's true. The, the screensaver on David's phone is a photo of his living room carpet. It's the first time an Ericsson's got a close-up of a bit of beige carpet since Sven went out with Ulrika. <laughs> Originally, David had a picture of his bed on his phone, but got embarrassed about his Hannah Montana duvet cover. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> uh, Lee. Ooh, possession. Oh, right, you've got to pick the box up then from under the desk. Well, you say box. Yeah, oh, sorry, the tube, Ooh, the tube. Yes. This is my wall map of the UK. I have marked every service station that I have ever visited on it. Oh, OK. I can so see him doing that. Yeah. <laughs> this is from a man who was criticising somebody else for photographing a beige carpet. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Sorry, if, are, they, um, are they little stickers? Yes. Sorry? Are there two colours of stickers? There are two colours what of stickers. What do they represent? The orange ones. Th these are the orange ones, the yeah. orange ones. Yeah. And I've also done blue ones. But why? Why? 
so I could differentiate between the two types of oh. service station. Why? What? I'm about to tell you. OK, well, come on. Just give me a second. <laughs> Sometimes Lee likes to finish his own sentences, sometimes not. <laughs> they basically do two differentiating uh, service stations. I use orange if I am heading north and blue if I'm heading south. Or if I'm heading west, I also go for blue. In east, I go for orange. Well, you have headed north a lot more than you've headed <laughs> west or east. I mean, how did you get back here? <laughs> That's equal if you count them. Looks like there are loads more orange. <laughs> uh, now that one on the in Scotland there on the. Top... I can't believe you know where Scotland is, David. Well done. Near Inverness, there's one. That yeah, one there. That one there. Would reminisce about that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I will. I will reminisce about yeah. that. Uh, I went in. Uh, went through to the main pasty area, where I ordered my Ginster's pasty, and uh, my say Aberdeen service station. It was absolutely the perfect temperature. Just, what, this just, is really hurting just, my arm. Okay, you can Sorry. Put it down. One more question. Can we have a look One more have a look. Yeah. One more, more look? question. Look? Though. Well, you don't have to spoil can it you, with the details. Can you if you want me. to have a look, they can have a look. Yeah. Can they? Yeah. yeah. These are all motorway service. Yeah. Oh, you're all coming, are you? Well, I, you know. Yeah. 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 There's an F and a, an asterisk. What yes. do they denote? They they know they know fantastic. And uh, <laughs> the asterisk is uh, <laughs> there's not a word. Blows my mind. Blows my mind. Um, the asterisk. And how many years of touring <laughs> does this represent? Oh, it's not just touring. I'll do it when I'm on holiday. I'll do it wherever I go. Mm. You know when you said that there were about the same number of orange and blue? There's seven blues and thirty-three oranges. <laughs> You're going to be laughing on the other side of your face when in the next round I say, I am colourblind. <laughs> <laughs> so, David, it's time to take a guess. What Aberdeen service station doesn't ring true. It's definitely... I wonder, with the Aberdeen one, that's right outside Aberdeen. So you stop, you stop at a service station about six minutes after departing. <laughs> if it's on empty, I stop and fill it up. Certainly, Which I'll, 33 I'll... times out of 40 happens when heading north. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uphill. You could... <laughs> Lie, lie. You're saying lie, lie. quite conclusively. Uh, Lee, is it the truth or is it in fact a lie? It is in fact a lie. No, no. 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 <laughs> it's a lie. That's not listening. <laughs> I just say to the idiots that come up with these questions, as if it's not hard enough that I put little stickers on a map because I fill up and I like to get... They'll think, oh no, how can we make it more harder? Well, I have four of them with blue, one, one with an X and one with a bloody asterisk. <laughs> Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> and there's the buzzer that uh, signals the end of the show, and I can reveal in a very, very tight contest tonight, I mean, there's very little between them. Um, David's team have won by seven points to three. <laughs> but of course, it's not just a team game. And uh, my individual liar of the week this week is Davina McCall. I'm pleased to say that you'll have another chance to catch Davina's best bits on Would I Lie to Use Little Brothers, Big Brothers, Extra Factor, It Takes Two, Big Mouth, Champion of Champions, The Aftermath. Good night. <laughs>